Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, with real uh, answers for real questions. Jean Thielio has uh, uh, posted an, a curious comment, and he said, would it be a good idea to get rid of all the crossover parts in my three-way speaker and get active crossover for every driver if I know the cutoff for every driver? So, my answer for that is, it's for you to try out whether you prefer active or passive. Um, now, <laughs> I think that that was like really quizzical and, and probably not helpful at all, but uh, that's how life works. I mean, really uh, have to be extremely disappointing here that I cannot tell you or any of you uh, whether the active or passive will be the one that you will prefer because when you have a stereo system with passive crossover and then you change it over to a stereo system with active crossover and you have like six guys listening to both of them there will be three guys who will swear to God that the passive is worse and three guys who will swear to God that, three, that the active is the worse of the three I mean, of the two <laughs> solutions. And then you also have them spend a week with both systems. And the guys who swore on their faith and oath and, and whatnot, probably a couple of them will change their minds when they lived with it for a week compared to just having an afternoon of fun listening session. So that's why I'm saying that you have to try these things out for yourself and there's no oracle in the universe who can tell you which one will be the one that you will prefer either on the short term or the long term. And, and those two might be drastically different. And uh, However, now I have to give, uh, uh, after this brief warning, a, a little bigger explanation that it's, it's not such a thing that you just have an active crossover for every driver. That's not how it works. It, it, it's it's, it's uh, uh, apples versus oranges. You, you cannot mix the two. The two active crossover uh, versus passive crossover, uh, how the way, how the systems are built have very little in common and you cannot change a passive crossover system into an active crossover system just by changing the crossover parts. No. You drastically have to totally change your system for one or the other. And the reason for that is, is uh, that the passive crossover is for your loudspeaker. And the active crossover is not hooked up to the loudspeaker. It's hooked up to your amplifier z, 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 and the z means plural, multiple amplifiers. So if you have a typical system that you have your source preamplifier, amplifier, three-way loudspeaker, if you want to change it to an active crossover system, then you remove the passive crossover from your loudspeaker and then you buy two more amplifiers, so you have three amplifiers, and then you insert the active crossover between your source, between your, or if you have a preamp, between your preamp and your amplifier Z, and, and the signal from the preamp goes into the active crossover. The active crossover splits the signals to three ways, <laughs> and each amplifier gets a separate signal and each amplifier is hooked up directly to each of the drivers. So that's why you cannot just toss out the passive components and put in an active crossover because you are not putting in the active crossover in the loudspeaker. The active bit feeds multiple amplifiers. So if you want to try out active crossover, the number of ways your speakers are, that's how many amplifiers you need. And people don't think about that, but this is the greatest bottleneck to an active system that 
you have to purchase two more pairs of stereo amplifiers. Now, if you, and also with the appropriate cables as well, interconnect cables and loudspeaker cables. And now here we reach to that point that uh, when is it feasible for you to try out active crossover and there are two uh, parts when uh, when you can try out one if you are if you have just unlimited means and you can purchase uh, two more of those very expensive amplifiers you already have and with the appropriate pairs of interconnect cables and the same loudspeaker cables as well and of course if you are not independently rich and you want to cheap out on it so you are compromising ah, okay i just get like a cheaper speaker cable for the tweeter and get the really good for the woofer i have to make you disappoint because if your system uh, is ready to handle active crossover and you cheap out on the uh, speaker cables it, it won't be as good as you intend it to be uh, so the other so i would say just go out on uh, on this path if you can afford to really pay the piper for the <laughs> extra two sets of amplifiers and power cords etc as the other other option is when you already have just a cheap digital amplifier and and you have very basic uh, interconnects very basic speaker cable you spend maybe a hundred bucks on the whole thing mm, buying two more of that 200 bucks it's all right it's it's not big money you can afford it right or maybe you cannot maybe you already went for the hundred dollar amplifier plus cables because you couldn't afford more then uh, it will be kind of a, a bind for you to just triple that cost for for the active uh, bit but but if you can afford it just do it and uh, and then if you have just a very cheap amplifier driving your loudspeakers uh, it might be a better option to try out active versus passive because um, uh, it, it, it might do a better job driving your speakers when it has an easier load on them because then that uh, amplifier doesn't need to drive a crossover it just needs to drive a dri uh, drive a driver so that's much easier uh, so then you can try it out and just figure it out if it it's better for you or not but then uh, ultimately you will find out that you want to improve on things and when you do that then you have to pay the piper because uh, every improvement you do you have to do for this three-way system you have to do three times so three times the improvement and cost on your amplifiers because you have to do it to all of your amps three times the cost for interconnects because you have to upgrade all three interconnects the, the same three times the cost for speaker cable because you have to upgrade three sets of speaker cables and three sets of power cords <laughs> so if you can uh, if you have like an unlimited uh, supply or very deep pockets then uh, active will be a very um, enjoyable active crossover will be a very enjoyable path for you but if you are already strapped for cash with your passive crossover system then uh, the active way is not for you because the cost will be exponentially <laughs> higher or at least triple the cost compared to staying the passive way so i hope this uh, shorter video will be helpful for all of you who are debating between active or passive and these were just the bare bone basics and hopefully this will help you to uh, make like uh, just the make out the rudimentaries that you need to know when you want to go the active path or passive path 
So thank you for tuning in. Thank you, um, Gentilio, for your question. And uh, team, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.